G'day everyone and welcome to New Tech. My name is Miles and thanks very much for watching. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out this handheld thermal imager, so stay tuned. So I've really wanted to get my hands on one of these thermal imaging devices for some time now and mainly to be used on my CNC machine. So when I build the electronic components that I just could give a quick scan over with one of these whilst it's working and check there's no overheating of any components there. So I didn't want to spend a lot of money on one of these devices. Um, but unfortunately, when I was looking online, there is a lot of devices available online but they are quite expensive. So there was only two that came up in the, in the low range. So there was this one here, and also it looks like a previous version of this one as well. So there's the AMG 8833. Now that is a much smaller camera uh, using a, a much smaller sensor. So it also, it only has about eight by eight sensors available on that camera alone. And you also have to have that tethered into some type of uh, five volt power supply too. So that's quite frustrating when you want to take it with you and do some simple um, diagnostics on your electronic components. So this one here was certainly um, a much better camera from what the specs say, but I couldn't find a lot of information about this camera. And, and that's, I suppose, why I want to uh, show you this video today to say, well, if this is a good camera, it might suit you as well. So I hope that it certainly helps out. So so this one here is the MLX90640 camera and it comes with some really simple components. So on the inside of this camera we have a GD32 F103 C8 T6. Now that is the 32-bit ARM Cortex. That's the microcontroller that controls the, uh, the programming on this and it also comes with a really nice large screen on the back of it. It also has an internal battery too so it's really nice to take with you and it can uh, be used I think up to about 10 hours. I, I really like the simplicity of this design um, and it is far cheaper than a lot available out in the market. So I've used this on a couple of things so far. I've tested it on my Surface Pro. Now that's Surface Pro 4, they were um, susceptible to overheating um, and so I had to replace the screen on it and you can still see where the main parts of my Surface Pro was overheating and it's quite nice to know you know, just roundabouts, uh, whereabouts that was overheating. I mean, the camera isn't overly sharp, but you do get a quite a, a good um, average of where the heat is coming from. Now, I also did try it on one of these uh, stepper motor controllers as well. So, um, and I know that stepper motor controllers, they, they do overheat quite quickly. Um, so it was really nice for me to be able to use this and, and be able to point out very quickly where the heat source was coming from. Now, there's a couple of things that I really love about this camera is that on the screen, so it does show you some live data, which is really helpful for when you need to find out some information quickly. So it shows you the lowest temperature and that is highlighted on the screen with a little uh, crosshair. It also shows you the highest temperature as well, so uh, points that out. Now, it's, it's not exact the temperature. I did find when I moved my camera closer to a subject that that temperature did rise. Um, so the closer you get, I think the more um, true that reading is going to be. But I also like how it gives you an average reading as well. So the average is just everything um, placed together and averaged out, which gives you the average reading. So, um, but besides that, it also has a, a pretty good picture um, involved. Now I know that you can't use this um, maybe through like a glass substance or anything like that, but for what I need it for in the garage, this is absolutely perfect um, to just check that I have got those components correct. Um, and that's the main reason why I purchased this camera. Now, some of the downsides about this camera is that it can't record any video. It can only do stills, uh, which is absolutely fine. If I wanted to record a video, I could just record the screen with my mobile device. Um, it doesn't have a tripod mount. Um, so this is really hard to mount onto something if you wanted to get um, a constant reading or something over time. Um, but I'm sure that I could come up with a, a very basic 3D printed uh, little mount that could go on there or even use an iPhone mount just to clamp that in and use on a tripod as well. For the basic use of the camera, it's very easy to use. At the top, you've got an on switch, just turn it on and straight away it boots up and can start using it. So you can also press the photo button, which just takes a screenshot of uh, the screen at that time and then saves it to the internal memory. And I think you can store up to about 100 photos on that memory. And that's just using a um, 128 megabyte internal memory storage as well. Now, 
once you finish with the camera and uh, you want to upload those photos to the camera, there's another button here, which I really wasn't sure what it did at first, but it does say it has like a little memory card um, icon there. And so I assumed that that was something to do with either viewing back the photo, um, but unfortunately you can't view it back on this device. You have to go through and um, upload it to the computer. So this button here is actually just to turn it from the viewport, so using the, the thermal imager to the USB um, upload um, feature on this camera. So it's very simple to use. Plug it in using the USB-C port on the side. Now that this uh, does come with a USB-C cord, which is quite handy. Plug it in, click this button after you've turned it on, and then that will convert it and you'll see it pop up on your computer very quickly. Now, once it's there, you can just use it like a normal USB device and open up the images and download from that point. And then you can do some uh, analysis if needed from those photos. So overall, this camera is a very easy camera to use. It is very cheap for the price point. So I think it's really worth the buck for this type of camera. Now, I haven't been sponsored at all for this video. I just um, didn't find any information about it online and I wanted to share it with everyone out there. So I, I really like it. And I'd certainly think if, if this is something that you were looking at to get, this is honestly um, a really great camera to have as part of your daily use in the, the workshop around electronic components, even though it doesn't do a very high resolution um, view on a lot of the images. It really is uh, a very simple and uh, well-designed uh, camera to use when you do need it. So I hope that I've helped you with your decision making. If, if you were looking for some type of thermal imaging camera, this is a great option to go for, but I will certainly leave that up to you and I hope that this video has been helpful. So if it has been helpful, feel free to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.